What's going on? Welcome to another episode of Crime Page of Botany Dustin. This is Tony. I'm here on Edwards Plateau, all right, on a small road, about, you know, 15 miles in this little cutty spot. I'm sure there's like a bazillion sex cults masquerading as churches as well as militia groups nearby. But we're here to look at one of the rarest plants in Texas, the American smoke tree, all right? The only member of its genus in North America. And this one doesn't get planted in uh, gardens for some reason. Instead, they prefer the Eurasian one, which can actually behave invasively, uh, Cotinus cogeria. But this is a member of the uh, the uh, Anacardiaceae family, the mango family, poison oak family, the sumac family with that beautiful venation on those leaves. Let's check out this plant. You know, the dog just took a shit right here. I don't know why she always shits in a trail, you know? She's trying to leave me landmines. Look at this. Anyway, this is it right here. They can get about eight feet tall. You can see it's grown with, uh, I think this is a Amsonia ciliata. So a Pasanaceae, the oleander family, beautiful flowers on it too, and they smell quite fragrant. Many of them are uh, lepidopteran pollinated, so going for the moth and butterfly thing, but they're not flowering now. Anyway, that aside, here's Cotinus abovatus. Look at that beautiful venation right there on those leaves. They're going deciduous for the winter, about to drop their leaves. They're flushing pigments. Not as, uh, not as showy as the leaves might otherwise be, but they call it the smoke tree because the inflorescences are just these panicles of tiny white flowers all right like many sumacs all right doing the same thing that many uh many sumacs do just you know tons of flowers but on these these dense inflorescences and they can be kind of wispy and then when they go to seed i mean just a beautiful fucking plant it really blows my mind that this is not planted more it grows in oklahoma uh texas seems to really like the limestone as well look at it she's photobunk would you mind going to sit over there louis go sit over there Go sit down over there. I just said, come on, what do I pay you for? But uh, anyway, you can see the, the plant over here. This guy's got that beautiful, look at those beautiful leaves. See, on the other side of the fence. We are doing roadside botany because this is Texas and private property is a fucking religion. So, you know, all, all the land's tied up in private landowners. You can't access it. But uh, that aside, you can see those leaves. Again, end of the season, you can see they're getting a little bit of degradation from the insects and what the shit. These can get upwards, again, of 8 to 10 feet. I got a friend who's got one planted in his yard in Austin. All right, beautiful. The leaves look gorgeous. They're not drought stressed. It's in a, you know, a yard that he can water every once in a while. Beautiful blue leaves and that venation. The venation on so many members of the sumac family is mind-blowing. Just so gorgeous. Look up Rus lentii in Baja. All right, the uh, serpentine endemic sumac there's another one see these are just they're, they're staying small because again they are drought stressed they're growing on this rocky limestone ridge but that look at it that beautiful those red petioles that goddamn veins on her oh look at that look at those veins look at that leaf venation all right now remember a third of this family has urushiol in it the poison ivy compound don't believe this does you know mangoes have it in the skin you see that blackening on mango skin that's uh that's urushiol but I think you'd have to eat it. I don't think it's in dense enough concentrations. Didn't evolve for us. It's an antifungal compound, maybe theater's microherbivory. But uh, Eurushiol is a very common component of the phytochemistry of the family Anacardiaceae, the pistachio sumac family, etc. But uh, there you go. See, one, two, three, four. Not many, but uh, this is kind of a rare plant in Texas. You don't get it that much, but oh, it looks berberous too. Look at that. That's the medicinal plant. Got berberin in those roots, that yellow berberin compound. Good for when you're sick. Antimicrobial, look at that. And this berberus, it's got that, that red, those red uh, anthocyanin pigments, those protective pigments on the new growth, protecting it from cold as well as sun. God, I've seen so many damn beer cans just discarded on the road here. Lots of drunk driving in Texas. You know, that's why they got to legalize weed here. I'm not a big weed guy, but maybe it'll get some people off the booze. Let's look at this plant over here. Yeah, beer cans and discarded televisions. That's nice. Threw a TV off a bridge once on Western Avenue. On the train tracks, not on a car, of course. Right, I do have morals. Uh, when I was like 16, it made a nice noise. Just made me remember that. Anyway, Frangula caroliniana. This is a great native plant member of the Buckthorn family, Ramnaceae. And look at those berries. All right, birds go ape shit over this. All right, this is a nice native buckthorn. Be great to have in a yard. We're on the western edge of the range right here. So they tend to like it a little more music and not as parts. You can see it's growing in the shade of this road cut right here. So that way's west over there. So it's not getting that hot afternoon sun, but it can eke out a living for itself right here. And we are, I don't know, maybe a thousand feet up, thousand foot elevation, but great fucking plant. And when they're going off, the flowers are, you know, covered in all kinds of cool pollinators and bees and with this shit. Got some uh, specific phytochemistry that's uh, probably a little toxic, I would imagine. 
Karwinski is in this family too. Another uh, Karwinski is actually pretty toxic. This is not Karwinski at all. But so you probably have, you know, Lepidopterans that use this as a host plant, almost definitely. And of course, the birds, just a living bird feeder. Look at those damn berries. Those squishy berries, the squishy fruits. Got a couple seeds in there. See that? Ooh. So it is a berry. It's not a droop. Yeah, look at them seeds. That's nice. Frangula Carolinaana, everybody. God, I love limestone. You know, it really is a fetish. Limestone is a thing. God damn it. Take me back to the Cretaceous, you know? Back before the rise of the mammals. Anyway, there you go. Solidago altissima. You get your golden rod by finishing up. Bacchus neglecta everywhere. One of the most underappreciated, quote unquote, weedy native plants. All right, this this broom. All right, coyote bush. The genus of coyote bush. Bacchus. About 500 species in it. Just a fucking banger of a plant lit up with flowers. These aren't blooming yet, but it's just colonizes disturbed sites, you know, does really well. Instant privacy screen covered in thousands of flowers and thus thousands of cool butterflies and bees and what the shit uh, during the uh, late uh, late summer when it's uh, flowering. Look at this guy right here. This bane of my existence. One of them right here. Pyracantha, horticultural atrocity and mean as hell. Rose family rosaceae, as you could tell just by looking at those those little berries that look like rose hips. Is it a berry or a droop? How many seeds you get in? You got quite a few. But, uh, you know, planted as a horticultural atrocity from the big box stores. It is kind of pretty. I'm sure it's very important where it's native. Here it's a horticultural atrocity and a bad invasive plant. And it just mean as hell. And the birds spread the seeds and it's got those, you know, removing these things can be a real pain in the ass. Look at those thorns. It's like they stick you and then it stings for a while. It's like they inject you with venom. They don't actually inject you with anything. But that's what it feels like because the fucking... The little points get stuck. I chainsawed a bunch of these down last year, you know, 15 feet tall. Absolutely terrible. Had to had to take the uh, herbicide to them because they'll they'll resprout. But Pyracanth is a genus. One of them's actually in danger. The Taiwanese species is endangered. I don't know if this is the European or Taiwan one, but uh, it's an endangered species where it's native, where it's got checks and balances, fungi and insects to keep it in check. Here it gets out of control. It's a bad invasive, and it's been, been released from yards because they whimsically planted it just because they thought it looked pretty. Mmm, yeah, that's so pretty. Yeah. Ooh, nice yucca. And then here we got a Edwards Plateau endemic, Brachelia cylindracea. So you'll only find this on the limestone on the Edwards Plateau in Texas. Brachelia, of course, is uh, related to stevia. Look at those long-ass styles. It's in the Joe Pieweed tribe, Eupatorii of the sunflower family, Aceraceae. Look at those long-ass styles. See those styles? Each one of those styles corresponds to a single individual flower that's aggregated together in what looks like a single flower, aka a composite flower of uh, Aceraceae. Look at all those multi-serial phyleries and what this shit. And it's got them glands, lots of hairs, and uh, the foliage, how's it smell? The foliage on Berkelia tends to smell pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't smell like much right now. Maybe it's just late in the season. But you look at it. Look, it's just growing right out the fucking rock wall. Growing right out the goddamn limestone, this Cretaceous limestone, this beautiful limestone. Here's some flowers that haven't gone off yet. All right. Another quote-unquote weedy native that just does so well and is, uh, you know, important for the local ecosystem. All right. So important, uh, you know, for uh, both uh, insects that use it as a host plant and then pollinators and then sure the birds eat the seeds and with the shit. Just a great fucking plant. Underappreciated. Look at that. Brachelia cylindracea. Ooh, that's nice. Look at that over there. You like that? Look, you got Dacelerian over there, too. That's so nice. So tall. Look at them layers. Muddy layers of limestone from 70 million years ago. Maybe 100 million years ago. Definitely the Cretaceous. God, I love it. I can't get enough. All right. Very specific soil chemistry. Much different than volcanics. It's why you get so many plants that are endemic to limestone. You're not going to find them growing on the volcanics that you might see in the Mojave Desert or southern Arizona, etc. Look at that oak growing as a chasmophyte, all right? A plant that grows out of a crack in a rock wall. See that? How old is that, you think? Could be 10 or 20 years old. But, you know, obviously it can only get so big. Just wonder how the hell it does it. There's probably, there's probably obviously, a you know, a chasm down there to get maybe a little bit of uh, limestone's been weathered into a soil. But uh, it's also, you know, oaks are mycorrhizal, so they get that, that fungal sheath, that mycelial sheath around their roots. They could just sit there and hang tight. Either way, pretty fucking impressive. Probably Quercus Buckleyi. What the shit is that? Look at that little toad. What are you doing out? It cooled off for you? So, oh man, he's really, he's hauling ass. Look at that little guy. See that? What are you doing on her, huh? Oh, it's a little frog. I thought it was a toad. Yeah, I can't get close to him. He ain't gonna let me get close. What's your coping strategy for the, uh, you know, seven, yeah, maybe six months of 100 degree temperatures, huh? 
Look at you, you cute little bastard. It's a cricket frog. I see you seeing me. Anyway, Cotinus abavatus, everybody. You want to catch it flower and be here in April. Look at how glabrous that leaf is. So shiny and glabrous and just goddamn gorgeous. Want to be here again. Be here in April. Catch it flower. You can see those tiny white flowers growing on the Edwards Plateau limestone. That beautiful Cretaceous limestone. Memoirs of a time before that comet hit the Yucatan and took out all the dinosaurs. Don't worry. We're going to go. We'll go to, we'll go to the grocery store. Get you some... Uh, Get you some treats, Louie. Don't worry about it. I'll get you some, some of them damn Trader Joe's dog treats or whatever shit. God, I love this plant. Get it in the garden. Grow seed. Take cuttings. Do whatever. This is definitely a plant worthy of conservation concern. Get in your goddamn native plant garden if you live in the Edwards Plateau or surrounding area on that beautiful Texas limestone. That's all I got. Go fuck yourself. Bye.